Uh, I grew up out in the country in Hamblin County up there, and we were sitting at the supper table one night. I was six, my brother Eddie was 12, and my brother Eddie was the coolest guy in Hamblin County that was 12 years old. He was the coolest 12 year old. He was a starting pitcher for the Little League, for the uh, Rotary Indians Little League team. Uh, he, he was good looking his whole life. All the women were crazy about him. He was just cool. Anyway, we're sitting there eating supper and my mother looked at my dad and said, Paul, I read in the Ladies Home Journal today that for a young man to be well-rounded, he needed to study music. Therefore, I have signed Eddie up for piano lessons. My brother choked on a piece of okra and fell off in the floor. <laughs> My dad said, what did you say? And mother said, you heard what I said, Paul. And he said, well, I think the only thing Ed needs to be well-rounded is a good inside curveball. Well, you don't argue with the ladies' home journal or my mama. And she said, go find Ed a good used piano. He'll have to practice here at the house. Dad said, all right. He said, uh, but after supper, Aretha, I want you to go up there in the attic in that old trunk and get my World War II Navy uniform out of there. He said, I was a seaman first class, you know. She said, why do you want that old uniform? He said, well, you know, I just joined the VFW and the commander told us that we was going to march in the 4th of July parade in our World War II uniform, so I'll need mine. So after dinner, Mama went up there in the attic and drug that uniform down, and my dad put the jacket on, and somehow the buttonhole was about 10 inches from the button. And my dad looked at my mother and he said, I told you not to put my uniform in the attic, it shrunk. <laughs> so the next day, my dad was, it was Friday, the next day my dad decided, you know, I better find me a uniform because I just got in the VFW and I want to make a good impression. So he knew exactly where to go. Out on Highway 25, there was a place called Uncle Sam's Recap Tire Center and military surplus. So my dad slid by there after work and Sam was behind the counter there and dad walked in and he said, well, hey, Mr. Hell, you need a new set of tires, are you? And dad said, no, my tires is good. He said, I need a World War II Seaman First Class uniform. I'm marching in the big 4th of July parade in, with the BFW. And Sam said to him, Mr. Hell, he said, you're a day late and a dollar short. He said, uh, Seems like everybody's uniform's been stored in the attics and shrunk on them. He said, there's been a run on enlisted man's uniform from every branch of the service. He said, I ain't got none left. And Dad said, don't you have anything at all left back there? And Sam said, well, I've got one left, but, and it's a Navy uniform, but, but Paul, he said, it's a lieutenant commander's uniform. And Dad said, a lieutenant commander's uniform, let me look at it. He tried the jacket on and it fit perfect, put that cap on, and ooh, that looked good. He looked at Sam and he said, Sam, you know, if I'd stayed in the Navy these last 15 years by now, I most likely would have been a lieutenant commander, and he bought it for $2.50. Well, he was putting it up back on the clothes hanger there and looked back in the dark back there where they recapped tires in the back back there. And he said, Sam, is that a piano I see back there? He said, Sam said, you wouldn't be in the market for a good used piano, would you? My dad said, well, I might be if it's any count. He said, can we see it? And Sam just about broke his arm opening up the counter to get my dad back there. And he turned on the big fluorescent lights and there was this piano upright and sitting on top of it were four cases of Quaker State and motor oil that Sam had bought at a fire sale price when a truck had run off in a ditch over in Cock County. Evidently Sam didn't notice it at the time he placed those four cases on top of that piano but one of those cans evidently got crushed and leaked oil all across the top of that piano and right down the front all the way to the floor causing the finish to crinkle up and look like popcorn smeared with black ink. And Dad said, ooh, that's, ooh, boy, look at the finish on that piano. And Sam said, Mr. Harrell, 
He said, you don't know what you're looking at, do you? Dad said, I'm looking at an ugly piano. He said, oh, oh. He said, Mr. Harold, this is a genuine Steinberg piano. Dad said, a Steinberg? I think I've heard of that. Sam said, it's the same thing Liberace plays. Dad said, really? His is more flat. He said, well, of course it is. That's the studio version. This is the home version. Dad said, how come it's so ugly looking? He said, oh, Mr. Harold, you just don't know anything about good pianos, do you? He said, this, is, this finish is exclusive to the Steinberg. He said, you've watched Liberace on television, ain't you? He, Dad said, yeah. He said, well, this is, the, the, this, is, this is the extra cost finish that keeps it from glaring under bright lights. And Dad, Dad said, well, it ain't glaring, is it? Well, it looks pretty, well, yeah, I guess I could see that. So Dad lifted up the keyboard and ran his fingers up and down there, and he said, wait a minute. He said, there's a bad key here, it won't come up. And Sam said, oh, oh the uneducated people I get in here. He said, the, you've watched Liberace on television, ain't you? And Dad said, well, yeah, we watch him every week. He said, does he ever look at his hands when he plays the pen? And Dad said, well, no, he's usually looking at the audience, I guess. Sam said, how do you think he knows where he's at? He said, that, that key right there is called the signal key. He said when he's playing along there, as long as he can f run a thumb over that, he knows right where he's at all the time, see? Dad said, boy, that'd come in handy. He said, what would you take for it? Sam said, $27.75. Dad offered him $25, and he about broke my dad's arm getting that money. He said, I'll be here tomorrow to get it. So the next morning, Dad and his Sunday school teacher, Max Singer, were in Max 1936 Chevrolet pickup. They were sitting at the back door of the closet hut when the door went up at 8 o'clock. Sam was sitting there with that piano on the forklift, put it in the back of that old Chevrolet truck, backed out from under it, and the back end of that truck went right down to the pavement. And the front end came right up in the air, and the tires were just swinging free up there. And Max Singer said, Paul, we can't haul this piano like this. And... and uh, Sam said, well, you boys are big fellers. He said, get in, the, get in the cab there and see if she don't come down. Well, they climbed up in the cab and it came down, but the tires were just barely kissing the gravel in the parking lot. And Max looked at my dad and said, Paul, we can't get your piano home. I'm sorry. And then Sam said, now wait just a minute, boys. Wait just a minute. Let me study this. And he looked at that truck and he said, what you need is counterweight. And what I recommend is 30 weight. And he sold those four cases of motor oil to Max and he put them between them on the seat and they drove it right home. <laughs> now the long version of this tells you how much trouble they had getting it in the house, but suffice it to say it involved a John Deere tractor with a manure bucket on the front. <laughs> but they got it in the house. My brother took one piano lesson and threatened to move to Nebraska if he had to take another one. So it never got played again. Three years later, we were fixing to move into town, and my mother was packing up the kitchen, and her sister, my Aunt Maddie, had come over from the Milk Sick Cove, and she was helping Mama pack up the kitchen, and her husband, my Uncle Harold, owned a big flatbed truck, and they were moving loads into town on that truck. Couches and twin beds and all that were going out the door and on that truck and into town and back. And I'm sitting there watching all this, thinking this is the most fun I've had in forever, watching all this stuff get loaded on that big truck. And I heard my mother say to her sister, Maddie, I've got something I want to give you. And Maddie said, it's that set of blue wheeled dishes that Mama gave you and didn't give me, ain't it? And she said, no, it's a lot better than that. I want to give you my piano. <laughs> Maddie said, oh, my goodness, uh, it's, it's just ugly, Aretha. And Mama said, well, you don't know anything about Steinberg pianos, do you? <laughs> so she conned her sister into putting that piano on the back of that truck, and off it went to Buncombe County. It turns out my Aunt Maddie had played guitar as a young woman. She just had an ear for music, and she sat down at that piano, and within a month, she could play anything she heard on the radio. She loved loved that piano fell in love with it could play it and play right over that key like it didn't even matter well 
When I was a young folk singer traveling around the United States, I'd always swing through Buncombe County to get my cornbread fix because I'd been up there where they make cake and call it cornbread, you know, up in Pennsylvania. So I needed my good hometown cornbread fix. I'd stop by and my Aunt Maddie would fix cornbread and we'd have, we'd have supper and then she'd play the piano and she could play anything I requested. She could play Paul McCartney's Long and Winding Road Make You Cry. But she grew up during the big band era, and her favorite big band was an outfit out of Texas called Bob Wills and his Texas Playboys. And her favorite song by them boys was called The Blues for Dixie. <laughs> There's an old piano in the living room. Middle C is stuck and it's a little out of tune But I would love to hear you play the blues for Dixie I dream of watermelons in a tub of ice Fried chicken and fried okra and white gravy on white rice Every time I hear you play the blues for Dixie Lightning bugs begin to flicker, crickets start to sing. That melody's as pretty as magnolias in the spring. I'll go in the kitchen, you sit down at the keys. I'll whip up the cornbread while you pound those ivories. I'd love to hear you play the blues for Dixie. Oh, let those notes ooze like molasses off a biscuit. I may shed a tear or two, but I am not afraid to risk it. Just to get to hear you play the blues for Dixie. There's an old piano in the living room. Middle C is stuck and it's a little out of tune. But I would love to hear you play. Aunt Maddie, can't you hear me when I say? I would love to hear you play the blues for Dixie Just one more time for me Thank you all so much.